Okay. Hello, everyone. Please welcome to Splunk and Virus Total joint webinar. We will start in a few minutes. Just let, let people uh, to join us properly. And uh, while you all joining, uh, we will start one of our polls. You, you may find a poll in this uh, bright talk on the right side. And uh, what for your uh, company IT environment? Is it hybrid environment, on-premise and cloud, multi-cloud when you're using two or more clouds, or you focus on one cloud provider, or you're just sitting on premises? So uh, please uh, start voting if anyone, if anyone joined. And we will get started in uh, one minute. And meanwhile, I will introduce myself. And uh, my name is Alexey Bokov, and I'm responsible for cloud strategy and uh, uh, designs. And I work closely with Google and uh, all parts of Google, including Quiros Total, for uh, onboarding new solutions and go to market. And I'm based in California, in Bay Area. Feel free to find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Uh, and I believe we can get started quickly. So please start voting on a, on a poll. I see there are there's some votes. Thank you, thank you. And I can see what there, there is. A, most of people are using on-premise and cloud. And uh, as, I, as I told everyone, significant amount of people still, still sitting on-premises and don't go to cloud yet. So uh, let's maybe get started in, in sharing slides. Sure. <clears throat> Give me a second so I can share the screen. So we are good to go. Yep. Slide show. Okay, let's get started. So this webinar is uh, dedicated to uh, our joint solution on security investigation uh, between Splunk and, and Virus Total and. Uh, before we get started, I need to uh, show a slide with from our legal, which says, what, uh, before we begin, I just want to quickly note what we, while we talk, we may talk about future products and future releases, what may become available only in future, which is unpredictable. So you should base any kind of decisions based on most current available technology. That's my legal disclaimer. So, and then after that, we can get started and do quick introductions. Oh, yes, uh, the slide. So my name is Alexey Bokov and I'm from Splunk. I'm a cloud strategist and global architect. And let me welcome my friend Ismail from VirusTotal. Ismail. Thank you very much, Alexey. This is Ismail from the VirusTotal team. I'm part of our customer success team. Uh, so we're basically working with our customers to unveil new use cases, to help you as much as we can to get the most of our uh, tool, which is VirusTotal. I'm going to be presenting today. The virus total for Splunk Adam. Thank you very much, uh, Alexei, for the, for your time today here. You have already yes. introduced yourself, but if you want to go again for the people who uh, just joined. Yeah, I'm Alexei. I'm, I'm from Splunk. So feel free to join me on Twitter or LinkedIn. I'm open to talk. And if you have any questions and would like to follow up, just find me on LinkedIn and Twitter. And let's go to, to our agenda for our webinar. I hope you will enjoy it. So we, I will set up a station and, and, and talk a little bit about uh, security as a data problem. Then we will uh, go deeper into our collaboration between Virus Total and Splunk and, and, and do some kind of introduction. And then there'll be awesome, great demo of Virus Total integration. And then we will do, we will talk about next steps and do some QA session. So let's go. And I would like to, uh, and I, I would like to, I would like to, sh to, to, to uh, let people who just joins, hey, we, hey folks, we have a poll on, a, I believe it's, it's on the right side of your screen. So please vote uh, and tell us a little bit about your IT infrastructure. Be really curious about this. So let's get started. So let me set up a stage and share a broader context of why Splunk and virus total integrations make a huge difference. So Splunk believes that organizations need to address security as a data problem. IT, DevOps, SecOps, other, uh, other organization in your company, uh, we, really, we, we really need to get all of data from your security operation solutions because it doesn't really matter where, where the problem is, actually. 
what, what matters is how quickly you can find it, find the problem, and how quickly you can fix it. So in what does it mean? It means that all data is relevant for security, for things like threat detection, incident investigation, and response. How quickly you can get context and size from all of your data sources for analysis is key, building effective cyber resilience. And uh, what we go to, what, what we can can go on. On next slide is uh, so things are changing. World are changing very very fast, and future is unpredictable. That also you know COVID and uh, remote work, digital transformation. Threats are becoming more sophisticated, and security teams need to keep up with all these expanding attacks across multi-cloud environment, hybrid environment, IoT devices, very diverse global infrastructure managed by uh, geo-distributed teams. And realizing what this thing, what future is uncertain, and uh, threats have became more sophisticated, all organizations, all, all businesses are investing a lot in resilience to uh, address unpredictable threats to business and spring back stronger when all these security incidents and events are cured. And InfoSec team actually is a in center, in epicenter of this delivery cybersecurity resilience to protect every aspect of your business. So let's go to uh, uh, next one. Yay. And uh, here, here, here comes Splunk. So Splunk delivers the fundamental elements for security operation. It's delivered data-centric, unified security posture. So it's a very quickly overview. What's, well, what, what do we have? So we have a data platform at center of your security operations, which allow you to ingest, get data in, normalize, provide security insights and business insights across different data streams. And there's a threat intelligence management, which enables teams to operationalize ex internal and external intelligence sources to trash alerts based on context, security, and insights. Then we go to security analytics using ML learning, AI-driven uh, behavior analysis, which can detect unknown, un unknown threats to help you prioritize and automate incidents. Then, then uh, we go to automation operations, which allow your security analysts, which usually <laughs> have like too many things to do, and uh, uh, automation and orchestration help you to automate this repetitive tasks, anything which can be automated, and save some time for research. And then we go to set research, which helps you stay informed about the latest attacks and adversary technologies so you can stay ahead of the threats. Each of these work together to de deliver essential capabilities of SOC team to keep, uh, keep up organization and, be, and help organization to be cyber resilient. And then we go to closer to what topic of our today webinar is why we're here and wh why it's important to uh, have a joint solution between Splunk as a, as a, as a unified security data, data centric platform and, uh, and, and virus total. Yeah, so uh, Splunk is a platform and, 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 and on top of this platform, you can see our vendor agnostic approach and, and unparalleled ecosystem, which give you flexibility to build modern SOC or, or, on tools which you like on the best ever tooling on and they collaborate with uh, uh, third parties and in community driven solutions. So we have a Splunk base, there's almost 3000 uh, apps, which cover like almost everything. And so some of these apps can come from Splunk, some of them comes from our cloud providers like Google or uh, Amazon, and some of them comes from from community. And uh, this, this is a beauty of Splunk as a one of beauties of Splunk as a platform, and I'm very happy to go to our joint solution with with, with Virus Total. We work, we work hard all together during past months uh, to make this uh, happen. And let's go to Virus Total, and then I would like to pass my microphone to my friend Ismail. Thank you very much, Alexei. <clears throat> so, for anyone who's not aware about what Virus Total is. Well, basically, it's a data set of malware. Anyone in the world is using VirusTotal to apply their malware samples, to apply suspicious URLs, IP addresses, domains, to check if they're malicious, if they're clean, if they could harm any infrastructure, their data, and so on. We've been here since 2004 gathering all this data. So today we've got more than 230 countries submitting samples almost every day. Um, We've, got, we've grown from files to URLs, domains, IP addresses. We are now aggregating uh, cursors rules like Yara, Sigma, Ideas, and 
also we are expanding to a more strategic intelligence approach. So Firestuttle can help you uh, with different use cases that could be um, when you've got security telemetry, like in Splunk, and you need to enrich that telemetry with threat intel data, within the incident response and forensic analysis. So when you're dealing with an incident, you need to gather all the context as possible to understand your enemy, to understand what happened. With that virus subtle, it's going to get you covered. Then we've got threat intel and advanced hunting. So this is the most proactive way of using virus subtle, in which you set up searches, you set up variables to look for samples, both in the past and for the future. Every time something is uploaded in virus subtle, it can be notified, you can download the sample, and so on. You can study them. Run and corporate infrastructure monitoring, so you can look for your own company and search for phishing attempts. You can find for malware, uh, which is communicating with your infrastructure or that is being downloaded from your URLs and so on. Red teaming and ethical hacking. So it's going to allow you to do some passive footprinting to get the malware samples you need to study and replicate their, their behavior. And finally, we've got vulnerability prioritization. So from all the samples that VirusTotal has in its uh, database, some of them uh, are, tag are tagged with CVEs. So imagine that we are dealing with exploit. That exploit can have a uh, tag with the CV that it's targeting. So we may know how popular or unpopular is a CVE becoming. But today we're not here to talk about VirusTotal in general. We're here to talk about PT4 Splunk. A VT first plank is going to be focused on three different use cases. To enrich your telemetry, to help you with your incident response, and with your vulnerability prioritization. Why have we created VT first plank? Well, basically, if you search in the in Splunk base, in the Splunk marketplace, you'll find different integrations, but we found in the necessity to develop an official one. Why? because we could bring our official support to our customers. Uh, we could build a cache using lookup tables that will allow you to not waste API quota for IOCs that you've already checked. We have developed some cool dashboards that will help you and give you a broader view about your threat intel, uh, about threat intel. And also um, we're working continuously to update it. Some of you have already installed it and have already used it. And you have seen uh, that we are constantly offering new updates to you with new features, with new dashboards to, get, to give the best experience to you. I also have to comment that we've got another integration, in this case developed by the Splunk team, that is focused on Splunk SOAR. So the integration we are going to talk about today is more focused on CM and the integration that is developed by Splunk, Firesotal V3 is called, is focused on their SOAR product. How can you find this? Well, basically, you can quickly go to uh, Splunk base, that's Splunk.com, look for VT4 Splunk, and you'll be automatically redirected here. From here, you just have to follow these steps Log into Splunk, install up from file after you download it. Choose the file, which is a tar, upload it, and restart your Splunk. And from there, let's go to demo. Once you install this, you'll be able to look to dashboards like these ones. These have already been populated with data that you can find in the attachments of this webinar. So if you look at the bottom uh, line under the video, you'll see a, a tab that is called attachments. You can click on them and they'll load a um, sample file that has some kind of logs that contain hashes, IP addresses, domains, and URLs. From there, we have populated this demo instance. So we are going to simulate that I am a secure analyst or a CISO or a threat hunter. 
I need, I need to understand what's happening in my infrastructure from the logs that I have in Splunk, coming from my EDR and coming from my proxy. So from the EDR, I would be able to get hashes. I would be able to get some uh, navigation logs, but from the proxy, I would focus on network logs. What are my users accessing to? So in this case, this is the first dashboard, Thread Intel, and this is aggregating all the IOCs that have been seen in your infrastructure, in your logs. So we've got files, domains, URLs, and IPs. We can pivot, and you can see that these charts are varying depending on what kind of IOC we're selecting. So in case of IPs, we've got depending on the country and on the autonomous system. In the case of URLs, by category, and by top level domain. Domains is similar, and then files by the extension and the malware category. If we go down, we're going to see the specific IOCs and the last seen in events. When was it last seen in your events, in your logs? The number of detections by the antivirus partners of VirusTotal, the file type, the threat label that you can get using the VirusTotal API, first seen in VirusTotal, and the full report. So we can find many samples in here. What happens if I click on any of them? Let's click on this one that has 64 detections. And if I go down, I'm going to see the specific event that has triggered it. In this case, this log is composed by SHA256 equals and the hash. Host spunk demo, source hashes, and source type generic single line. This is demo data that you can find uh, in, the, in the touched file that I shared with you. But not only that, I cannot only see what kinds of logs are related to that specific IOC. In this case, I can see that there are two logs related to this file. But if I click on this one and I go here for report open, what I'm going to get is Firestuttle inside Splunk. All the information that you can see in Firestuttle will be available to you without leaving the Splunk platform. So you don't need to keep wasting time, changing context, changing tabs. You've got everything here. You've got the security vendor scanning results like this, crowdsource yard rule, behavioral detections, IDS rules, the detections, community scores, relationships, the same that you can see in the personal website, but also attribution. So if this hash in this case, or IOC has been found in collections uh, created by OSIN, by security researchers, by users. In this case, we can quickly see that we're talking about WannaCry. As we can see that it is part of many collections talking about WannaCry and the threat actors that have used WannaCry in the past. As you can see, there are a bunch of threat actors. Some references that we could check for um, reports and so on to get even more information about WannaCry or the kind of malware that we were talking about and so on. Moving to the next dashboard, we would be talking about vulnerability intelligence. In this case, as I talked to you before, there are samples in Varistotl that has been categorized as exploits to specific vulnerabilities. So from here, we are getting that CVE and if we find and now you see that it's targeting that specific CV in your logs, it is going to appear here. In this case, we have this vulnerability from 2021. that was first seen in your events, in your logs, and last seen at this time, so from 8th of March to 29th of March, and the number of hashes related to this CV. If I click on it, I'll be able to see all the hashes again, before with the full report here and all the logs related to that vulnerability. Moving on, I'm going to put this a little bit zoom in so you can see better. Of course, 
You can also select the time window, so no limit, last month, last week, or last day. We can move up to adversary intelligence, which is one of the most interesting ones. From here, we would be able to see from all the events that we've taken from the infrastructure, from the EDR and the proxy, we can see if those IOCs inside those logs are related to my campaigns and malware toolkits. Like for instance, this one, to Ryuk, to Blackbasta, Log4j. So you can see here, so if I click on Blackbasta, I would be able to see an IP address from the US, from Microsoft Autonomous System. So we could say that maybe this is part of Azure. This is an Azure instance that has been compromised. And that is, uh, this was from Blackbuster, right? Maybe it's a command and control for Blackbuster. Not only that, we are also talking about threat actors. So here we can find the threat actors that your logs, your, the IOCs of your logs have been related to. In this case, for instance, fin 7 again, we can click on it and see the hashes, domains, URLs, and IPs, if they were related to this threat actor, and the logs in which they appear. What if I wanted to know about, more about this threat actor? Like in this case, action, I got the sponsor region, targeted regions, targeted industries. Interested, I wanted to know more. So I can click here and open, and I would jump to virus total. To the virus total card, it would give me a description of what Axiom is doing. Uh, that would give me the evolution from the telemetry, all the malware uh, toolkits that they're using, specific IOCs, reports, TTPs that they are using, and so on. I could continue my investigation from that side. The last um, tab that we've added here is MITRE attack techniques. So the samples in Aristotle are also related to uh, TTPs by different sandboxes. For instance, Kappa from Mandian. So automatically a sample is designed with TTPs based on what it's doing in, dynamic, uh, in a dynamic analysis environment. For instance, this one, this sub-technique, security software discovery. Interesting, let's click on it. We know that there are 76 hashes that are related to this TTP that are trying to discover security software, like for instance, my EDR. And from here, I've got all the hashes and the logs. From here, we're moving to the last dashboard, which is MITRE ATT&CK. In this case, this is similar to what we've seen, but viewed from the tactics, the MITRE matrix, right? With the tactics, with the different techniques, and how many IOCs have been found in my logs, depending on each tactic. Like for instance, discovery, I can click on it and going down all the IOCs again, as you can see, it is very consistent. The interface is very consistent. You always click on something in the charts, then see the IOCs related to it, and then you see the logs related to it. And if I want it, for instance, to see the logs specific to this hash, I will be able to see them here. I cannot only click on the tactics, but also on the techniques. I would get the same interface with the hashes and the logs. All right, but how do I set up this? This is simple. This is made with searches. And this was the original approach of this integration. If we go to search, we can see in my search history and we can try to do a search. Uh, for instance, in this one, I'm looking to all, in my, all my indices for um, communication, HTTP communication, I'm looking with VT force Planck IP, I can set here IP, hash, domain, or URL, and then destination IP, which is the attribute shown in stream HTTP. And then the VT detections more than zero. I want to get the logs. Let's put this on work. I want to get the logs 
that have been found in virus total that contain an IP address, a destination with more than zero detections that are malicious by at least one antivirus vendor. In this case, URL scanners or blacklist. So we can see here the first one. This is the event. Destination IP is this one. And I can see here all the new fields that VirusTotal has added based on how they start. VT country, VT detections, VT ID, VT network, VT reputation. I can see that it is related to some collections like Cobalt Strike. Um, I can see that it has two detections. Two partners are considering it malicious. Reputation was 45, uh, 46. People in the community are considering it malicious. So this is not looking good. So based on those searches, when you do any of these searches, your dashboards are enriched. But um, there's a problem, which is, OK, if I need to do all these manual searches in order to populate my dashboards, I need to have someone full time doing here the searches if they're manual, unless I automate it with some script or so. No worries. You can go here to configuration and set it up so these are made automatically. Here in general settings, you can set up your API key for the searches to work. And how much time do you want the data to be saved in your lookup tables? The dashboards, basically. How much time do you want the dashboard to keep the data? And in order to make this automatically, you can go to correlation settings and set this up. Enable automatic correlation. So every 30 minutes, the new events, you look for this specific index or the ones that you set, let's say, I've got my index that receives data from my EDR and from my proxy. So I would set up here, EDR, proxy, right? And now I'm trying to look for each object attribute that would point me to an IOC. In this case, in case of uh, false, SHA256, SHA1, MD5. In case of URLs, target URL, URL, domain, and source IP, source address, IP address, IP. I can configure it as much as I want and depending on my logs. So from here, every 30 minutes, every log that matches these conditions will be enriched and it will appear in your dashboards. As easy as that. And you can set up here a cache. In this case, we have set up a cache of four days. So if the same IP appears in your logs two times in the same day, it will only be enriched once in Virusotl. So you are not wasting your API quota looking for the same. After four days, maybe the IP address or the domain has changed its verdict. So I want to know. I don't want to get the cache. So after four days, if that IOC appears again, it will be enriched. Let's go back to the presentation. The enrichment flow. I, this is the key idea of this webinar, how it works. I do searches manually. I could do these searches manually. I could set up an automation to enrich the logs and, for instance, uh, support my incident and response flow. So every time I open a Jira ticket, I don't need to go um, and get the logs, go to virus shuttle, check the IOC, take a screenshot, copy paste it into my Jira ticket. No, you already have all the virus shuttle data there. With that, you've got manual enrichment to your dashboards. And from there, from the correlation settings, you also have automatic enrichment. So these are the two concepts, two key concepts. And it depends on how you want it to work. How do I get the API key? It's easy. If you're a free user, you go to virus.com. GUI join us, but there are some limits, which is 500 requests per day and four per minute. So it's nice if you want to try and if you want to see how it works, but unfortunately, it's not going to work well for a production environment and you will not have access to threat actors. Once you have the API key, you go to your, to your virus shuttle, you click on your um, profile and select API key. 
Ah, from there. There you are. There's another way. As a premium user, you go to versatile.com slash contact, versatile.com slash contact, and you will be able to get potential unlimited API quota, threat actors, more relationships, year rules, and so on. All the things that we've talked in the beginning. In conclusion, to finish, the Fierce Planck will help you to enhance your security telemetry, your incident response, and your vulnerability prioritization. Coming soon, we've got threat feeds. You'll be able to set up the yeah, rules in Virusdotal. You're going to be able to select some custom uh, threat feeds, collections of malware, threat actors, and so on, and enrich your Splunk with that proactively. Malicious behavior rules from Sigma, all the crowdsourced Sigma rules in Virusdotal. We're working on, on, on offering them to you in your Splunk, so you'll be able not only to detect based on IOCs, but also in OAA, in behavior. And see you at .com 23. We're going to be there, and I'm going to pass the word to, to Alexi. Thank you a lot for awesome demo. I really love it, love the integrations. And I would like to mention that uh, during our Last month, when we had work all together on on, on, on this integration, Virus Total team made a great job on updates. So this 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 specific app is under uh, great progress. So I seen in person like three 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 major updates. So new updates will be coming soon. I hope. So it will be. If you if you have any any any, any good ideas about what we what we miss in this uh, in this in this app and what 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 we would what what you what you want to ask us to make a difference different, feel free to reach us out your email and it's, it's going to happen so this app is under great progress so uh, yes we, uh, please if please register on dotnet conf it's a splunk event and uh, i will be speaking here and uh, i we don't have a our session approved yet but i hope that we will have a specific session dedicated to virus total and uh, whenever we will, we will we will cover it on uh, other sessions, so it totally uh, m makes sense to register, and we'll have a Google booth and uh, probably uh, where we, where you can ask questions about Virus Total, and also it's a great event for everybody who is in security community. So stay tuned for for next updates. Feel free to reach me out or email on an email or follow on Twitter or LinkedIn, and and uh, thank you all for uh, uh, for asking questions. Questions are very appreciated. We will we will go to them right now in a few seconds, and I just want to say. We have a polls on the right side. So on the first poll, I see that we have a great attendance. But on the second one, which is related to cyber threats, please don't mind to click on poll and, and, uh, and answer on what kind of cyber threats your organization faces. Um, and uh, let's go to questions. So and uh, I still see still 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 see what there, there are some. Uh, how to say uh, questions about licensing? So yes, you need to have a Virus Total license, and you can get the license for free if you just register on Virus Total. As uh, Ismail just said, it's uh, just a few minutes. You get get free license, and this free license will almost be, will give you like a full power of this integration. But there are limitations on uh, on the numbers of uh, requests which we which you do. And also, there is a let me go for questions then. So yes, yes, thank you, thank you. I see that there is more, 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 more people answering on, on the poll. So as soon as we reach out some number on this poll, I will go to next one. So please, please, please answer, and we will go to the next one, which is the more interesting. So there is a question which says, "Thank you, or oh, you're welcome. Thank you for for, for having us." So uh, let's get. Is there, it was a, it was a question about. Uh, yes, uh, Ismail Chrome ne needs update. That's very true. Uh, Ismail will work <laughs> right after, right after this demo. And uh, <clears throat> I swear, it appeared at the moment the webinar started. So I don't yes, it's not, as, as usually, as usually, it's always. It's, uh, <laughs> but thank you for 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 for, for your uh, uh, attendance and uh, helping us to be secure. Altogether, this is this is community security is community effort for sure. And there's a last question: only audio? No, it's not only audio. As an experienced podcaster, I I I I watching this webinar on my phone, and I can truly say that it's video and audio works fine. So this question is also answered. And let's go to next one, which is a 
do I need uh, there is a question from Taras do I need a wiki license for this yes I believe you answer this Taras if you still need to go deeper feel free to uh, follow up with uh, Ismail or me on on on, on more details uh, how does the, the integration impact your licensing oh my god the, the questions tons of questions I just not <laughs> well, 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 well I'm being yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you for posting. I really appreciate like your your activity. I was, uh, you know, <laughs> when while 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 we made a dry run with this one, I say, hey, if you'll be no questions, I will be asking questions. But I don't need to do so because we have a great audience. Thank you. So, how does integration impact your licensing? Does each enrichment use API call? So, email. Yes, I can see that there are many questions regarding this. Remember, every kind of IOC you see in the logs and that are enriched with Firesettle require one API call, unless that's ha that has been enriched before and we're in the uh, data freshness days window, right? In that cache. So remember, I've got an IAP address uh, one day, it is enriched with Firesettle, so one API query. And then for the next four days, I won't need to call again Firesettle. If it appears in my logs, it will get the information that I previously got. And Ismail, can you can you can you move to previous slide with, with our context because maybe people will reach uh, us out. Just let's let 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 let's have it on screen while we're answering. Sure. Yes, and and maybe it makes sense to show this correlation show this correlation settings on a on a in a in a, in a, in virus in in Splunk instance. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. This 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 is where the, this is where you manage it basically, and correlation does help you to uh, correlation. Settings help you to, how to say, maybe save some uh, uh, requests to database. Basically, exactly. Uh, that's 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 what what they what to do. Uh, so it can help you to optimize this request. So I believe you answered, Carol. If you still have questions, feel free to reach us out on emails. We will be happy to follow up. And also another an another another. Uh, another uh, Action item uh, to audience: If you feel what we, uh, if you're interested in any kind of next deep dive, like we let's 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 uh, let's do a webinar about virus Totland Splunk in in this specific area, we will be happy to do so. So please mm, feel free to post this as a question. Say, hey guys, let's let's have a webinar focused on you know, virus total and and uh, malware specifically, for example. And we have a po we posted new poll. Uh, please uh, feel free to go and uh, answer on this. There is a new poll in the polls, and there is a question from Taras. Are there IOC be, be being just checked against your database? Yes, they are. We are not uploading anything to VirusOtl as we just have the logs. So we either check the hash, the URL, the IP, or the domain. Yep, and there is a question from from for myself uh, about what kind of uh, what kind of data sources, what, what kind of data, what kind of logs uh, I can use in in order to use virus total database. So what 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 logs can be used? What what logs in in Splunk? I can index anything in Splunk, but what kind of logs can be used for 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 virus total to to match hashes, ICs, and do this all this uh, awesome threat intelligence analysis? Okay. For that, this is a really good question. As we've seen in the search, you can select the index. And as you're seeing here, we can also select the index if we wanted the automatic enrichment for the dashboards. So basically, any kind of sort of data that you can set as an index and has these attributes, any of those attributes uh, divided by the, by the commas, separated by the commas, can be enriched with virus total. So imagine that my logs, uh, I'm enriching from my logs of my uh, firewall um, and I'm getting IP addresses. And then my IP address is in the firewall. The logs appear with um, IP address equals uh, 8888, right? So I would set up here, IP address. And from here, any log from my firewall will be enriched with virus alone. So this gives you full flexibility to enrich whatever source you want. Yep. So it can be IoT logs, but basically any data stream which have this this the, this fields and you can use this data stream for matching with, with virus total. Just just configure it here. 
Yeah. I believe we answered the question. So it was the next question from Erika. So I wanted to verify, you say there is two integrations, VT for Splunk, VT developed, and we have total V3. Splunk developed, focused on SAR, correct. Yes, it is correct. And uh, there is a two, there is many apps if you if you in, in Splunk base, I, as I told, there is a third parties, there, there is a community, there is a many uh, many people who work on, on integration and we have uh, this app which is supported and created by wireless total which called vt for splunk and uh, it's it's focused on enterprise security and uh, uh, wireless total v3 is focused on sar uh, it's developed by splunk but you can find many other apps it's in 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 in, in uh, splunk base way is made by different people uh so it's way not topic of our, of our webinar but yes it's uh, there are two integrations. Uh, one integration made by made by Virus Total, second by Splunk. But it's not. Uh, it's uh, just top of iceberg of other integrations made by by other people. So it's no, not just two apps. It's much more. Does VT for Splunk require Splunk Enterprise Security? VT for Splunk. Uh, uh, if you can you can you, can you click, click on the top of for VT for Splunk? Is no please. Sure. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's in Splunk base. Third tab in your Chrome, which needs to be updated. No, 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 It's next, next, it's a uh, VT for Splunk in, in Splunk base, next tab in Europe. All right, VT for Splunk in Splunk. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. Yeah, 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 the tab, yeah. all right. Yeah, and, and here you can see, you can see compatibility. So it says Splunk Enterprise Platform, so basically it works with any Splunk Enterprise Platform. And it works for Splunk Cloud, Splunk uh, 2. So I hope I answered the question. So yes, that's why I'm just making it Eric, and if you if you if you still if you would like to follow up, reach me out. We'll be happy to go deeper. Okay, I hope it's answered. I really hope it's answered. And let's There's go to the next one from Tibol Salem. Uh, who's the cache in the requested URL sending in this plank? Will it only cache the requested URL? With another app, first of all, my will look up for Splunk. We needed to change the Python command from scanning and caching full index to only store the entries that were requested by using the command in use cases or dashboards. OK, if you remember in one of the slides, uh, one of the reasons that we created VT for Splunk was specifically to create this kind, kind of cache. So in this case, it's like yours. If you're seeing the same URL a thousand times in the same minute, doesn't it doesn't make any sense to keep enriching it as it's not going to change the verdicts and are going to change the no more relationships makes no sense. So that's why we developed the cache. And this it is a configuration that you can change as much as you want. So if you want to set up a cache of one day or 10 days, it's up to you. I hope that's uh, that was answered, people. Yeah, if not, feel free to reach his mom here on this. Sure. Yep. Okay, let's go to next question. Let let me read it. So, is it uh, from Jason? Is it one API call per uh, destination in this example? For instance, my search returns five hundred unique de destination destination IP addresses. Be oh, sorry, it's going up. Uh, will that mean what there is five hundred API calls being made to virus total? Good question. So, yes, every single IP that appears in your logs, um, it will be enriched. Like the ones that we've seen, if you check the attached file, in that file, uh, you'll find many IPs. All those IPs uh, at the moment that you ingest it, if you add that data to, uh, to Splunk and you separate it as different logs uh, per line, all of them will be enriched. If there are five, uh, 500, 500 will be enriched individually. And yes, 500 API calls being made to virus at all. Okay, uh, next, if we're done with this. And as usually, if, you, if, you, if you're not really answered a question, ask us on email. Another question from Jason. Uh, I have the latest version installed on my air search head. The full report click does, doesn't work and meter tab is missing. Ah, okay. So uh, we are in the Splunk Victoria. Now, is there something that I can do? But I will have full. Okay, that's a great question. As I told, uh, this app is in progress, and uh, Mitre uh, Mitre dashboard just show up basically yesterday, I believe. In in app, you just need to update your app, Splunk uh, uh, VT for Splunk app. We, exactly. we, 
if, if you see there is like many variations are happening like very frequently so it's very uh, uh, under develop up in a, in a good in a good progress so meter attacks just happened yesterday right is now exactly I think it was on 28th and remember that um, Vita Force Plant Cloud takes a few more days to get the updates. Mm -hmm. So don't worry, wait for it. And let's hope that all your requests will be fulfilled with that new version. Yeah, and question. So manual enrichment, does it also cache the data? Yes, it caches the data default. Yep. Uh, will you support data models and point web as a source for scheduled search? Okay, Sorry, could you repeat? Uh, will you support data models yes. for schedule searches? Yeah, we are working on it. Um, right now, we've got the the attributes, the log attributes there. Uh, yeah. Maybe, maybe yeah. But yes, we're working on this and it will be uh, happening in next versions. Yep, 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 yep. Peter, if, and if you want to be uh, like a pilot customer, for this, feel free to reach us out. We can we can we can give you some kind of early access, so you can try it before it go live. Thank you, thank you for question. So, what will happen if you exceed the API limit? Uh, <laughs> if you exceed the API limit, uh, no worries. It will just notify you. Hey, you have reached the 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 limit of your API quota, and contact us if you need more. So, no worries for that. You will not be uh, going to jail for reaching more than your API code uh, limit for surpassing it. I can see other question. Thank you for the presentation. Is there a way to use the app when the search head cannot connect directly to the internet? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, if you see here in the configuration, you can set up a proxy. Uh, many, this is the case of many customers. Is enable it, the HTTP, the host, the port, the username and password. And if you want, you can also uh, make remote DNS resolution. Okay, and uh, folks, I, I typed I typed our uh, emails in the announcement section. So just to let people know what was uh, our emails. And one more question from Jason, does the full report require an API call? Yes, we answer this or not? Does the full, re uh, full report require API call? Uh, the full report. Uh, extend talk. One second. Yeah. Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I don't think so, but I can I can work on it. I don't think so, as it has already appeared there in your the oh. the, the, the data has been already uh, taken into your Splunk. Uh, but that's a very good question. You know, more, uh, our joint intention was to uh, optimize the, the number of API calls when we when we, when, when, when we work on the sub. So by this intention, I truly suppose it shouldn't require API call when you have full report. Yes, yes, just, you're right, you're right. Sorry for the confusion. If you check the full report, uh, an API quota will be consumed. Oh, it will be consumed. Sorry, yes. my mistakes. Yeah, yeah. So good question, Jason. It's, it will be consumed. How oh, one API call? Uh, okay, so it will be it will be one API call on this full report. Mm -hmm. My mistake. So what's what, it's question? One more question from uh, uh, chat. So can we access this video later? Yes, yes. you will be able. Yes, you can. Yeah, we can. Yeah, we can share the uh, video and back later for sure. Yes, you can find the deck in the first announcement, and the video uh, will be this recording will be available to you in in Brighton, mm -hmm. in the same link, and we'll also try to upload this to YouTube, so it's going to be easier to share with more people and so. Yeah, and keep asking question about API licensing. I told you it will it will be hot topic. <laughs> Is it counted on the API license every events enriched one by one? Not the event, the IOC. So imagine that um, you've got different events with different IOCs. Basically, hash enrich is going to cost an API quota. URL enrich is going to cost one API quota. 
Okay, and a question from uh, Dominique. Do you have any insights on the performance of the automatic lockups in large environments, especially when ingesting a lot of firewall data, process creation, DNS, and proxy? Uh, the in large environments, when ingesting a lot of firewall data, process creation, DNS, and proxy. Um, yeah, we hope that with the cache, that's going to help. Remember that every time you query for an IOC, uh, it's going to the internet, it's going to query your API. So you've got that latency. Um, so that's why we build the, the cache. So it's just keep trying. You can also try with uh, manual searches before. Um, let's see how it works, how the latency is doing with your large amount of logs. And from there, you can keep selecting the most important ones in case it takes too much time or you don't have enough APA quota in some cases like that. But it's just trying and trying. Yeah, Dominic, and if you want to go deeper and uh, look on your specific requirements and uh, your architecture depl and deployment of Splunk in your company, feel free to reach me out. We can work on scaling and making sure that you guys are happy with performance. Yeah, let's go to, I hope we answered. So uh, next one, what's the best practice for virus total granular permission settings in SOAR? Will it work well if we disable file upload and download? How to detect the change of granular permission changes in the user audit log? <laughs> I Good question, Holly. From my side, maybe Alexi can answer this, but from my side, I, I only know about uh, PT4 Splunk, the specific integration we're talking today. Yeah, Holly, yeah, Holly, I believe it's it, it's 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 related to another integration which uh, focus on SOAR, and it's uh, not a really topic for this specific webinar. So, if you want, we can follow up with you. So just ping me on email and say, hey, I would like to uh, get this. Uh, Question, question answer is it's, it's it's another app in Splunk base but and we, we can we can we can talk about this like in later oh it's a point email for feel feel free to reach me out you can see my email in uh, in announcement but good question so does vt enrichment consume Splunk license anyhow uh Yes, somehow it consumes the Splunk license as a uh, you, you, as anything that you, that you ingest data. So it's uh, uh, how to say, but data is already ingested. So do, it's it's if don't do is are you using uh, so you can uh, you consume Splunk licenses in meaning that you have a more uh, dashboards and more uh, workloads on your. Splunk, so it can be more Splunk uh, virtual course in theory, but I really doubt it's really affect your licensing. So technically, yes, but in real life, no. It's a question from Peter. Yeah, if you, you know, we can go deeper again, so I just need to know like how you're using this. If you're running like the thousands of searches, yes, it's a uh, and and and, uh, and a lot of them so they, they consume they consume com compute for example in your Splunk cloud uh, and, it, and it may affect your like bill but it's uh maybe not the case for majority of customers and it's not a case for on-prem installations next question uh, when i start automatic enrichment on vt for splunk for the first time ever as a free user and reach the limit of requests per day will the automatic enrichment continue on its own next day or should i some do something again about it again so <laughs> please, I, I told you this will be question say if i just like install splunk, vt for splunk what i will see all right yeah once you set up pt for splunk dashboards will be clean no alerts you go to configuration you set up your public api key your correlation settings, and you start to work. Let's see what you can get in the in the last 30 minute events. So imagine that you reach the 500 APA quota consumed in that day. In that case, uh, no worries. Yes, it will continue the next day. You lose, of course, uh, a lot of information as it's not going to be able to query very subtle uh, during that time. Uh, but yeah, you won't need to do anything like the API uh, 
he will be working again the next day. But very good question. Very good question. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but good good thing good great thing about this integration. What you basically you install it and you put the key and that's all. And you get like very important insights automatically con configured. You don't need to configure anything except putting your license key. You just need to wait 30 minutes to get first in size. I believe you answer the question. Next one. Uh, when I start automatic enrichment. Oh, it's it's, it's already answered. Yeah, it's Sorry. the same. Yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, let me go up a list. What about not secure page? Uh -huh. What is it? Brian, I don't really know what do you mean not oh, secure maybe. page. What about that note secure page? Uh, no idea, no idea. Ah, I can see. This is a this is a this is a note secure in a, in a, in a Chrome. Uh, I if you click on this, I believe there there's a there's a some um something on. Can you click on this note secure? Where? In the, in the, in the URL. Oh. Yeah, God, yeah. It's not secure because it's our it's a demo environment. It's a GCP instance in which we are working on this. Uh, so yeah, we've got HTTP data instead of HTTP uh, HTTP traffic instead of HTTPS. No worries, it's it's just because of our environment that has set up like this, but it has nothing to do with VT Force Plank. Uh, actually, but yeah, me, could, me, well let seen. Me, let me open this. Yes, it says for me. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I can go deeper on this. It's uh, I believe it's not about HTTPS. I believe it's, it's 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 about it's about Chrome who is too smart and as Chrome is getting chicken our like admin passwords and say hey your admin password maybe it's not a yeah it's not cyber. good 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 enough. So I believe it's about this. It's, I believe it's about this. Yeah. So yeah. in 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 real life you get like admin if you give admin access and uh... okay let's go next next question. What's the limit of cache? Cache size. Um, the limit of the cache, uh, I that I can know of. Uh, we have not reached the limit in our demo environment. Uh, da, da, da. In a production environment, if you start um, enriching that cache, as it's a VT lookup, as, as it is a lookup table, um, it, will, it will be rich as the limit of the own lookup table in Splunk. So yeah. keep it stored. And good, good, good suggestion for next feature is about quota management. A configuration option to, to set, set a quota will be helpful. I completely agree on this. So can we set up like a say, hey, I want, don't want my bill to be overused. Yeah. It's We're a... thinking about doing something like that, like selecting a specific kind of IOCs uh, that you want to enrich. For instance, yeah. I want to enrich hashes. Awesome. Yeah, good, good suggestion. Thank you for posting this, Erika. Yeah, isn't isn't can... there a confidentiality in issue since our internal logs will be automatically shared with VT? Uh, your internal logs will be automatically shared with Aristotle. Uh Not really. Uh, what we are going to see in our API is the, uh, the specific. IOC will be saying a hash. That's it, or an IP address as destination, something like that. But no. yeah, we are not good. going to be able to see your specific the, the, the full log. It's not going to be uh, sent to our to our API. What well, uh, maybe uh, what kind of uh, maybe I can rephrase this question. So what kind of data we keep for Splunk sending to Virus Total deploy Virus Total? Uh, sorry. Could what kind of what data uh, what data from Splunk virus total for Splunk sending to virus total? Uh, the specific one that you set up here in correlation. Yeah, just yeah, just everything point that in. appears here, or if you do the search, like in the one we've done before. Uh, for instance, in this one, uh, at the search, we are checking hash. So VT for Splunk. Is ingesting hash SHA256. So the specific hash. That's it. We're getting only the, the specific IOC, not the whole log. Yeah, so you 
So you can choose what you share with Vo Exactly. Virustore. Exactly. That's 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 the thing. It's not like all your logs go to virus total and then process there. It's a, it's a good question. Thank you. What else? We are running out oh, of time. Yeah. When integrating with VT for Splunk, will it yeah. scan all my historical logs? Or for a pack, does it go? Can this be customized? Um, you can set up a search, like in this case. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. We're ingesting it, we're with VT for Splunk. It's getting all the SHA-256 of this source type, of this index, and we're seeing the, the not null. But all the hashes, that you're sending it here will be enriching the, the, the dashboards. And so, so basically, you can see any historical log. With the automated one, you'll see every 30 minutes. Uh, with search, manual search, you'll be able to check. Imagine that I've got logs from one year ago, I would be able to check them. No problem yeah. at all. Yeah, and so, so, yes, please reach out, Ismail, on uh, get contact from Virus Total Sales, and I believe we can, we can, we can, uh, Virus Total can follow up. Folks, we really get, uh, we, we really need to wrap up. Thank you all for attendance. I really appreciate the, the audition. We have a, we have a very awesome, awesome attendance. Great questions. I really uh, 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 like how uh, our the, the webinar uh, went. So we will do more. We will do more. Thank you all for attendance. Feel free to follow up and uh, have a great, awesome day. We will share the deck and video later. Thank you all. Thank you very much, everyone. See you at .conf.